What's going on my dear friends? Today in this video, let's learn and master the Angular Framework's latest version. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so in the previous lecture, we did this delete operation. For this delete operation, we had to use the index of the array to delete the relevant array object. So for this, we used this index of JavaScript array method. But guys, in Angular, we have a simple approach for this. In Angular, we can directly get the index of the looping array using the ng4 directive with just one line of word, right? So let's see this in action. There is not much here, just simply add this after this ng4 loop. Add a semicolon. After this again, define another variable for index. So let i assign index. So guys, with this index, ng4 loop will throw the current index number of the looping array. So in order to use that, we have to assign this into a variable. So this is what we did with this new variable. Alright, so we successfully captured the index of the object array values. Next, um, wait, before we move on, let's load these index numbers inside the browser view so we can understand this clearly. So before the string interpolation, add another string interpolation and add the index variable, which is this i. That's it. So save this and go to the browser. As you guys can see here, this time we got the index numbers loaded inside the browser. These numbers started from 0. Why is that? Because we are looping through an array. So array index starting from 0. Simple, right? Alright, so guys, this is how we capture the index of the looping array in Angular ng4 directive way. So now let's see how we can use this to deal with the delete operation. Nothing much here. This time just simply pass this index variable into this on delete method parameter instead of the previous user's object. So as you guys can see here, after we changing this parameter variable, we are getting this compile error. Why is that? Because this time we are sending an index number, not an object. So in order to fix this, we have to change this variable type to number. Wait, um, I'll comment this. And let's create another method for this approach so we can compare them both clearly. Down here, again, create the onDelete method. Inside parentheses, create the parameter variable something index, and this time set this type as number. Now, inside this method, nothing like previous, we don't need to use the index of method because we already have the index number. So just simply add this splice method to remove that target value from the user's array. So down here, this dot our array users obj and again dot splice method. So now inside this parenthesis, pass the index number. That's it. So save this all and go to the browser. Press one of these delete button. As you guys can see here, when I click the button that relevant item removed from the view, which means this is working as previous. Awesome, right? So guys, with a single line of code, we achieved the delete operation as we expected. So this is the beauty of Angular. Alright, so before we move on, some of you might wonder why we need to assign the index to a variable instead of using it directly. The reason is that ng4 in Angular provides a mechanism to capture the current loop's index and bind it to a local template variable. This local variable can then be used within the scope of the loop to access the current index. Without assigning it to a variable, we don't have a way to reference the index value directly in the template. So that's why we are assigning this to a new template variable. Hope you guys got the idea. Alright guys, that's it for this lecture. Let's move on to the next lecture. 
Alright guys, in the previous lecture we learned how to use the index of for loop directive in the ng4 directive. So in this lecture let's look at how to use the same index value in the new syntax approach. For this we'll use this for loop syntax block. We created this in the previous lecture. So now let's see how to capture the index number of this looping array. So this is also same like the previous approach. First we have to declare a variable. So let i assign. Now we have to assign this to the index. So pass that here. As you guys can see here, we are getting this compile error unknown variable index. So what is this guys? Can you guys guess? So, so guys, the problem is in this new syntax approach, this index value will be stored inside of a dollar sign index variable not the simple index variable like the ng4. So in order to fix this, we have to add the dollar sign before this index. That's it. So now the error is gone. So guys, this is how we access the index variable in this new syntax approach. So almost same like the ng4 directive. The only difference is this dollar sign. So hope you guys got the idea. Alright, so now we can use this index value inside our looping scope. So first let's render this index number inside the browser view. So we can see this clearly. So same like previous, before the string interpolation, inside this li tag, add another string interpolation and pass the index variable, which is this i. That's it. So save this and go to the browser. As you guys can see here, now we got the index value inside this new syntax loop as well. So now using this, we can do the delete logic. Um, let's do this. Uh, the all other steps are same like previous. So create a button inside this loop. The button name is delete. Next add a click event binding. From this call the on delete method. So guys, this method required the index number. So pass this index variable inside this parenthesis as the parameter. That's it. So we already created and wrote the delete operations inside this on delete method. So again, we don't need to write this. So save this all and go to the browser. As you guys can see here, we got the delete buttons. Delete the user John, as you guys can see. This remove the John from the list. So now again remove Smith and next and so on. So guys, delete button working as we planned. So that's it for this lecture. Once again, in order to capture the index in the syntax for loop approach, we have to use the dollar sign index, right? So hope you guys got the idea. All right, so let's move on to the next lecture. Alright, so guys think that we want to show the total number of user accounts that are stored inside of our users or bj array inside the browser view. So how do we do that? For this we have two different approaches. So let's see them one by one. So first see the JavaScript way. So guys, in JavaScript we have the length method in arrays to get the length of an array, right? So we can simply use this to get the user counts that are stored inside this users or vj array. Wait, so let's write example so we can understand this clearly. Uh, first thing first, I want to show this user count when this component loads inside the browser. For this, we can use the constructor method. So guys, don't worry about this constructor method. We will learn about this in detail in next lectures. For now, just follow this code. So inside the app component is file, create the constructor method. Very simple. This also same like previous regular TypeScript methods. So the method name is constructor and next the method parentheses and at last add the method scope. Now inside this, let's log the user's count. So create a console log and Inside this log parenthesis, pass this user obj array's length. So, how do we access this user obj variable? 
this dot users obj after this dot length so as you guys know this length method will return how many array values are stored inside this users obj array in our case can you guys tell me how many user objects stored inside this array it's four right so save this and go to the browser inside the browser console we got this array length four in other words users count of this array is four so guys we got this array value using the array length javascript method guys remember this these arrays and all of the array methods that we used in previous lectures and also this lecture coming with the javascript or the typescript these are not angular things right so angular is developed on top of the javascript so that's why we can use all the javascript concepts methods in angular okay all right so we got this value inside this component is file and we printed this users count inside the browsers console so this browser console will be used by the developers not the end users so in order to show the total count of users inside the browser view or the dom we have to get this users array length inside the app component html file so can you guys tell me a way to do this yes of course we can use the string interpolation approach so go to the app component html file mm, let's show this inside this li tags so before this add another string interpolation scope open and close two curly brackets inside this now we have to add the length of the users obj array so how do we do that simply just call the array length method from here same like previous so inside this users obj dot length that's it so guys simply this will return the length of this users obj and render that length value inside the browser that's it so save this all and go to the browser as you guys can see here we got this array length or the users count inside front of all of these users so let's add a, let's add another new user as you guys can see here this users count also increased 4 to 5 if i add another user again this value increased awesome right so guys uh, this is how we capture and work with the array's length or in our case number of users count using the javascript length approach so in the next lecture let's look at the angular approach all right so guys in this lecture let's look at how we can get the users count using the angular approach which is using this ng4 directive so let's see this in action guys in this ng4 directive we have an inbuilt variable to capture the looping arrays length something same like this index approach so nothing much here very simple just simply add this inside this loop after this index again we have to create a variable to capture this so create a new variable something users count so let keyword and the variable name is users count so after this assign this to the count variable which is coming from this ng4 directive so guys why do we have to assign this to a variable because this is coming from the ng4 directive in order to use this inside of our html component file we have to store it inside of another variable which is declared under this scope so otherwise we cannot use this inside our template file right all right so now we have the users count so let's load this inside the browser view so for this also we have to use the string interpolation approach mm, let's remove this previous javascript length method here and this time let's pass this users count variable that's it so save this and go to the browser as you guys can see here we got the users count for printed here same as previous so if i add a new user this count also changed to number five so this is working like previous without any issues but this time we use the ng4 directive to get the count so some of you guys may wonder is there any issue if you use the previous javascript length method for this mm guys there is no issue for this but if we are using the angular framework to develop our application then why do we need to use the javascript methods 
even a better approach is available with the angular framework right so always guys if there is a better approach in angular for any condition or logics or code try to use that otherwise you cannot take the full advantage of the angular framework so hope you guys got the idea all right so guys now let's see how we can do this getting the users array count using the new syntax block approach so let's see this in action same like the previous first we need a variable so declare that inside this for loop syntax block let users count assign count so again we are getting this error why is that in this new syntax approach this count variable modified as dollar sign count so change it to dollar sign count that's it the only difference is this dollar symbol compare with the ng4 count variable right so next let's render this inside the browser view before this add another string interpolation scope and pass the count variable here that's it so save this and go to the browser as you guys can see here we got this users count cool right so guys this is how we deal with the count in angular for directive um, i think that's it for this lecture so let's move on to the next all right so guys think if this array is empty then what will happen to this loop wait let's see this in action let's go to the app component ts file and remove all the users obj arrays objects save this and go to the browser in here we got nothing just an empty page why we got this empty page because there is no value inside our array right if i press this add new users button this will start to render the new user value inside the browser so guys now what i want to do is i want to show a message something like no users to display inside this browser v so how do we do that can you guys guess mm, for this first we have to check whether this looping array has values or not so how do we do that for this we have to use the ng if directive so let's do this before this create a div and inside this add a p tag and add the message that we want to show the message is no users to display now i want to load this inside the browser conditionally so for this let's use the ng if directive so inside this add the ng if directive so the asterisk symbol and the directive is ng if so next the condition so what is the condition we want to load this message inside the browser view when there is no value stored inside the users array so let's add the condition here the users obj which is our array dot length equals operator which is double equal signs after this add zero because we want to check whether this array length is zero or not so guys if this array length is equal to zero this will return true so in that case this will render this message inside the browser so save this and go to the browser as you guys can see here we got this no users message inside the browser so how do we get this now our users obj array is empty which means this array length will return zero in that case this will return true if this return true this message will render inside the browser view so if i add a new user to this as you guys can see here this time the message is removed from the view and this loads the users details inside the browser right so guys this time we added a new user object to the array programmatically using this add new user button so once we add the new user value to this array this array length will increase to one in that case the statement will return false because this length is now not equals to the zero in that case this will remove this p tag from the dom so this is what's happening behind the scenes so guys all this happen in fraction of second all in real time without reloading the web page so this is another example for change detection mechanism in angular right uh, all right so before we move on i want to show you something 
Um, some of you guys may wonder why do we didn't use this count ng if directive value to do this logic. With this also we can get the array's length, right? So why do we using this JavaScript method here? So guys, this is a valid question. But when there is no values inside the array, this ng4 will not loop through this array. This will stop and this will move on to the next code. Uh, wait, I'll show you this. So let's comment uh, the previous message. Now inside this, let's add a p tag and add the message. We'll copy and paste the previous message. And inside this li tags, now let's set the ng if directive to show this no user data message inside the browser view. The same thing we did before. But this time we'll use this count value instead of the array length method. So add the ng if directive inside this p tags. So after this condition, let's check whether this user count value is equals to zero or not. So the user count equals operator zero. If this user's value is zero, this should render inside the browser view, right? So save this and go to the browser. We got nothing here. So now our array is empty. So this message should render inside the browser, right? Why this is not rendering this message inside the browser? So guys, as I said before, if there are no values inside the looping array, this ng4 will stop executing and move on to the next. So in that case, this will ignore these all. So that's why this is not loaded inside the browser. On the other hand, we cannot use this count value out of this ng4 directive scope. So in order to achieve this in here, we have to use the JavaScript array length method so there is no any other option so that's why i used this approach so hope you guys got the idea all right so let's move on to the next lecture where we learn how to do the same scenario using the new follow syntax approach